Enjoy the moment, baby. Let's go. Enjoy the moment. Hello, hello. Welcome to another edition of Creme 2 Football Friday. I'm Travis Green. And I'm Andrew Quinn. Travis, we had some overtime drama yeah. for our game of the week this week. Yeah. So what better way to kick things off with Riverside taking a trip all the way down to West oh. Valley tonight. West Valley looking to improve to 5-1 and one on the season. This game was scoreless into the third quarter. A good one, but the Eagles break the tie. Ethan Turley to Austin Clark with the shimmy into the end zone for the touchdown, puts the Eags up 7-0, but Riverside answers in the fourth quarter. Jake Gaffney to Javante Chambers for the touchdown. That ties things up at seven, and we would head to overtime. Riverside scores first. Gaffney drills the field goal to make it 10-7 Rams, but West Valley gets the ball down to the one, and Turley punches it in. Eagles win this one, 13-10 wow. in overtime. Defensive battle. Let's head out to Coeur d'Alene for a rivalry. The CDA Vikings visiting Lake City. Andrew, let me tell you, the parking lot was packed for this one. Whole town at the game. <laughs> and the game not starting ideal for the T-Wolves. Punting from their own territory and bad snap there. Goes over the punter's head. Ball down at the one. CDA set up with a golden opportunity. And they turn there to it is. the brotherly the show. <laughs> Caden Simons on the score. That made it 10 at nothing. Vikings. Vikings would find the end zone again just a few minutes later in the second quarter. Carson Spielman, nice stiff arm there, finds the promised land. CDA up 17 zip in a hurry. Lake City would rebound with a score before half, though. Avery Cherry swings it out to a wide open Ike Johnson. But that was the only time Lake City would find the end zone. The rest of the way was all Coeur d'Alene. Vikes win 31 to 7. Mount Spokane taking that undefeated record on the road to Central Valley tonight. Wildcats would strike first in this one. TJ Haberman connects with Ryan Borchers here, and he's going to fight for the end zone. Oh, but that get in ball there, big gets fella. ripped out. Oh. He fumbles, but look who's there to save the day. <laughs> Bodie Gardner picks up the fumble. He scores to make it 6 0 Wildcats, but CB responds. Bo Reisenauer to Danner Smith. He takes it in for the tutty. That makes it 7-6 Bears. Then right near the end of the half, Talon Main drills the field goal That's right great. here, and that would put Mount Spokane up for good. The Wildcats go on to win this one 23-13. Gonzaga Prep visiting U High, and the Bullpups may have matured to Bulldogs tonight, <laughs> Andrew. Uh, we'll pick things up third quarter. Titans looking to get on the scoreboard. Caleb Walcott, a little trouble with it there. He sends up a prayer, but it's picked off by Jackson Pierce. That was one of those nights for you, High G Prep up 42 0 into the fourth. Aiden Patterson says, let's make that 49 0. QB keeper for the Tuddy. Yeah, fair to say this one was all G Prep. Bullpups win 49 0. Moving on to Ridgeline, paying Cheney a visit, and it was all Ridgeline in this one. Landon Garner saying, let me talk to ya, <laughs> to Landon Q. Snell. He makes the catch to give the Falcons the early lead. Garner leads the GSL in passing by a mile. After a Ridgeline interception, it would be Garner once again, finding this time number five, Braden Allen. Dog. Falcons up 14 zip, absolute dog. <laughs> like we said, all Ridgeline in this one. Running back, Nico Pena would run this one in. Ridgeline dominates 46-6. Yeah. There you go. Wow. LA Knight in the building. Rogers <laughs> hosting Clarkston at One Spokane Stadium around happy hour tonight. Awful news for Rogers, however. Quarterback Aaron Kinsey in a full forearm hard cast. You see it right there. So no QB duties Tough for play. him tonight. Clarkston would take advantage. Colby Bogle's pass is going to be picked off by Nathan Summers. He takes it back for a pick six. That makes it 13 0. Bantams. On the next drive, it's deja vu. Bogle is picked off by Hayden Line. He is gone. That makes it 20 to nothing, Clarkson. But check this out, Travis. Bogle would not let this deter him. On the next play, he finds Ronald Warwick, the Onions. fifth. 
with an absolutely gorgeous ball right there. It makes it 20 to six, but in the end, it was just too much Clarkston tonight. Carter Steinwan finds line here for the TD. Bantams go on to win it, 39-12. Well, don't go anywhere. We have much more football highlights coming your way. Plus, we got another play of the week coming your way and a t-shirt. Stay a tuned. T-shirt. Let's see this. <laughs> which one's going to be the play of the week. Football uh, Friday is back in just four minutes. Welcome back. We have more Friday football highlights to get to. And of course, Andrew, another play. Of the week. That's right. But before we find out who gets that free t-shirt, let's jump right into our next game. Up north, we go to a sold out homecoming crowd as the Colville Hawks taking on the Freeman Scotties. The game starts off quick for Freeman. Kanoa Rogan takes the handoff down the sideline. They think they've got him wrapped up like four <laughs> times, but he takes it in to put the Scotties up by two scores. The Scotties also work the air game. Luke Whitaker deep downfield to Sage Gilbert, the longest play of the game right there. And then on the last drive of the half, Whitaker swings it out to Rogan. He pushes some fellas out of the way right there, breaking tackles. He's into the end zone. Freeman would go on to win this one, 41-23. We're continuing to spin tonight under the lights. Crim 2's hometown highlight kicked off earlier this evening. That's right. Every Friday going forward this October, we're traveling to a small town, highlighting what makes them special. And this week, our team went out to Reardon. So Crim 2's Mark Hanrahan sat down with Gene Smith, Dan Graham and Eric Nicola, and Matt Klaus. But what do these men all have in common? In the last 50 years, They've been or are the head football coach for Reardon. Between them, they've won four state titles and tallied a whole lot more wins than losses. And Mark had the chance to ask them what makes coaching and living out there so special. Boy, I don't know. There's a lot of things. I, I, I like to see progress, you know, and, and we usually have enough people for uh, 11-man football, but sometimes you should wish you were an eight-man football because you get your butt kicked pretty bad. <laughs> you know, we, we are fortunate, and this, this is one of the differences. Um, we get to know these kids, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. We know the kids. They super, know the super. expectations. They know the traditions. They know what the expectations are coming into high school football. Get this. The current head coach, Matt Klaus, played under Dan Graham in the 90s. And all four men say they've all been fortunate enough to coach their own sons at Reardon as well. Pretty cool stuff. So how did Klaus's Screaming Eagles do tonight up against a Soton? This one was a doozy. First quarter will pick things up. Ryson Soliday hit his right Ooh. stick up. And I'm wow. talking about controller. That's the old hit stick to force the fumble. Peter Eggleston recovers. Reardon would capitalize. Soliday just laid the lumber. Now he's out here dropping dimes to Jakari Singleton to put the screen, Screaming Eagles up. Second half, Reardon takes a 13-zip lead. Hop on the old SS Screaming Eagles. <laughs> Soliday to Singleton again for the tutty. A missed PAT, however, that would come back to haunt them. A Soton scoring with seven minutes left in this game. Cody Ells going deep for his man, Gavin Ells. Ooh. I'm going to assume some sort of relation <laughs> there. Panthers alive, cutting the deficit to six. Less than a minute left in the game. A Soton with a chance to take the lead. It's Ells to Ells again. Are oh you kidding me? Oh, my goodness. Panthers take a 14-13 lead after Deep the PAT. The About 30 seconds left. Reardon would have the ball in the final seconds, but ball would fall out of bounds here. Party at the That's Ells right. house, Andrew. No doubt. And good night to be in that home. A <laughs> Soton wins 14-13. Northwest Christian visiting Liberty. Let's pick things up in the second half in this one. Liberty down big, but the Lancers would restore a little bit of life. Maddox Strobel is going to find number 81, Drew Pearsall, for the nice catch there in the corner of the end zone. How about that? Not too shabby. Liberty, unfortunately, though, that was their only score of the game. Jonathan Lake on the handoff here for the Crusaders. That's a big run that would really put this game away. Northwest Christian firing on all cylinders tonight they take this they take this game 42 to 7. to cougar country we go and i'm not talking about the burger joint andrew chuila <laughs> taking on lynn ritzville this one was close late in the third quarter cougars quarterback nolan generet slings it to dakota acosta who tumbles into the end zone a two-point conversion puts them up by one 
in the fourth, taking back Ooh. the lead. Nice Kickers kick. are people too. Nice kick. Broncos just over the crossbar there. That puts Broncos back on top. Late in the fourth, two-point game. Cougars working their way down the field. Jennerett puts it up, but intercepted Ooh. by defensive back Zach Klein. You think the game's over? <laughs> Not quite yet. Cougars get one more chance on fourth and goal. Oh. Knocked down. That sealed the game. Lynn Ritzville wins a nail biter, 22 to 20. And finally, for you, it's our favorite part of the show: play of the week time. We got we got the shirt. There it is. We're a well-oiled machine we here them now. All out now, so you yes. Know, we're, we're caught up. Yeah, we're caught up. So, so we're going to keep get it going one. now. But here we go. This one, <laughs> we're talking about defense, defense tonight. The Clarkston Bantams, Nathan Summers. You see it right here. He jumps up, reaches up, and holds <laughs> in that pick. He <laughs> takes it down the sideline for a pick six. A uh, pretty good defensive play right there. Yeah. Guys. I mean, look at the acrobatic snag. We got yeah, here slow it is, here. slow mo. Jeez, I Louise. Mean, not bad for a DB, yeah. huh? Who says defensive <laughs> yeah. guys don't have hands? Yeah, you know, prove them, prove them wrong. For me, that was certainly the case, but uh, for him, it's not. Yeah, <laughs> really nice play right there. So congratulations to young Mr. Summers. And hey, if you missed any of the show tonight and want to see more, or you just want to rewatch, you can find our full show on Krem 2's YouTube page or our streaming service, Krem 2 Plus. Of course, that's free to download on Roku, Apple TV, or your Amazon Fire Stick. Nowadays, I'm sure you can even download it in your car, Andrew. Yeah, you can get it anywhere. anywhere. Put it on the PlayStation. Why not? <laughs> hey, why not? Give it a shot. Yeah. So, hey, what do we got? Busy. College. The college day, college football tomorrow, yep. WSU against UCLA. Surprisingly, not favorites in that game. Unbelievable. The 13th ranked team in the nation facing an unranked team and UCLA's and favorite. That, and then we got Idaho Crazy. playing Cal Poly. Yep. Would imagine Vandals. We'll win see. That one. We'll, we'll see, you know, but uh, possibility for some history tomorrow. Hayden Hatton, two touchdown receptions away from breaking the record. Wow. Can he do it? Tune in we'll tomorrow. See. Find out. We'll see you next week. Good night. <laughs>